Bitcoin has seen a short-term correction back to 36,000. Are we going to see a trend breakdown and continuation lower, or will Bitcoin push back upwards, breaking past that 38k resistance? Let's go ahead and jump into the charts. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin from a macro, a daily and a short-term perspective, going over the technical and structural levels and exactly what you need to be watching out for and expect going forward. Before we get into it, smash that like button, hit that comment button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts the data, the technical and structural information, and the relevant economic events. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You will get access to updates, charts, analysis, videos, educational posts, and everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and the relevant economic news. If you were interested in trading, join our VIP group. We post trading signals with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, and exclusive analysis. Not only will you get access to our VIP group, you also get access to our group chats, our general chat, our trading chart and education chat, our trade setup chat, our news, our daily video, and our help chat. If you're interested in getting access to all of that, go ahead and contact me in the pinned comment of the free channel to get access. Let's dive into the video, guys, starting on the market data. How are we looking for today? Volume is up 14%, sitting at 132 billion. With rising volume, we see rising liquidations. Liquidations are up to 221 million. This is up 57% in the last 24 hours, with a total amount of liquidations coming from 167 million in longs and 53 million in shorts. Again, these longs got absolutely brutalized. A lot of late entries expecting that 38K break, but we saw a strong 6.5% rejection all the way back down to retest this major uptrending support line. We'll be discussing this in the short term analysis in today's video. Moving back to the data, taking a look at that volatility index, we can see the 30-day volatility index is starting to move up again, and the 60-day volatility index is also starting to move up again, suggesting potential large move incoming. Are we going to see that breakdown? Are we going to see a correction back to 32K? Or are we going to break through that major 38K resistance? We'll likely find out pretty soon. Moving on from there to the DXY, the DXY is still looking relatively bearish, sitting underneath that major, major resistance at 105 to 106, as well as underneath the uptrending parabolic curve represented by that blue line. So overall, while the DXY remains below these two key levels, we are technically in a downtrend and we are technically bearish. I would expect the DXY to continue lower on the higher time frame, provided it remains below 105. If it can bounce back above 105, we could see a short-term rally upwards. And if we break above this major downtrending resistance represented by this diagonal trend line, we will likely see a continuation to 108, being that upper level of resistance. Of course, a break above this level will be very, very uh, bullish for the dollar and very, very bearish for traditional assets. If we do see the DXY drop, we are likely to see these risk assets, the S&P, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, Bitcoin continue toward the upside. So keep your eyes peeled on that. Looking at the S&P 500, we do have this major diagonal high time frame resistance represented by this black trend line. We can see the S&P 500 is getting close to retested, but not quite there yet. This level is going to be acting as a major trigger point for a continuation back to its all time high, meaning if the price is able to break above this diagonal trend line, we are likely going to see a retrace, a move back up to 48K. Oh, sorry. 4,800. Until then, guys, the short-term trend has flipped 
bullish as we have broken above this short-term downtrending diagonal trend line. And therefore, the S&P 500 will remain in a short-term uptrend, provided it is able to hold above this red zone, specifically 4,460. If we lose 4,460, we will likely resume this downtrend back towards that POC level. Moving over to the Dow Jones, a very similar look. The same respective diagonal downtrending trend line on the higher time frame. If we break above that level, we can expect a continuation to 37K. And of course, the same downtrending short-term diagonal trend line as the S&P, representing a short-term breakout and uptrend. If we see a continuation upwards, this of course will be very, very bullish. And again, if we lose this 34,600 level, we are likely going to see a correction back to our major high time frame support. A lot rests on what the Dow Jones does, uh, the DXY does to determine where these asset markets or these markets are going to move in the coming weeks. Keep your eyes peeled, watch out for them, they are looking pretty decent. Let's go ahead, however, and jump into Bitcoin. But before we do, a quick word from our advertisers, BitGet and BingX. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. Okay guys, let's go ahead and jump into Bitcoin, but make sure if you are on BitGet, if you are trading on BitGet, if you're via my referral link on BitGet, head to the free channel, check out this promotion. We're doing giveaways for Apple Watches, iPhones, MacBooks, AirPods, and even Rolex watches. All you need to do to enter is come over here, sign up via my link and click register. That will take you to a new webpage. All you need to do is click the register button and you'll be entered in that campaign. You can find more information over here. Well, probably the largest campaign ever done by BitGet. And I'm very, very proud to bring that to you guys. Let's jump into video starting on Bitcoin. So let's discuss the short term price action, guys. On the short term, we have annotated, or should I say, we have labeled our key major levels on the chart. These are going to be our low, which is going to be 30,600, our bearish trigger, okay, which is 33,350, our bullish trigger, which is 38K, and of course, our short-term uptrend. This is going to be our ST, our short-term uptrend, the uptrend we have been in ever since the 25th of October, coming on four weeks, a four-week-long uptrend. As you can see, in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin came up to retest its upper level of resistance. It got rejected, coming all the way back down to retest that uptrending trend line. If you were checking out yesterday's video, guys, if you're watching yesterday's video, you would have predicted or you would have known we saw all of this coming. We said if we break down this 15 RSI, we are likely going to see a correction on Bitcoin, which will take us all the way back down to 36K. If you were in the VIP group, you would have actually taken that trade over here. You can see over here, we took that trade, 36K final target. We hit that for 230% profit. At the moment, guys, Bitcoin has retested the uptrending level of support and support is support until it is not. Therefore, we do expect a bounce and we actually expect a continuation all the way back up to 38K while this level holds as support. Provided we remain above this uptrending diagonal trend line, the trend is still up, right? If we go ahead and take this uh, diagonal trend line and we just add a little arrow to the end of it, make it a little bit 
a little bit bolder, so you can see it. This is the trajectory of price action. We expect this trajectory to continue while the price remains above this trend line. And therefore, even though we have seen a strong short-term correction, we have corrected into support and we are now retesting the uptrend. We should then expect a continuation upwards to retest the upper range of resistance, provided that diagonal trend line holds. If the diagonal trend line holds, if Bitcoin continues upwards to 38k, that would be the third retest and it is very, very unlikely Bitcoin is going to reject on the third time. If we retest 38k, it is highly likely we're going to be pushing back up to 40,000. 40,000 being, guys, the upper level of resistance within this high time frame resistance range. In fact, also this local top point right over here. So 40,000 will be the next target if 38,000 is broken. Now, that is all very well. That is all very cool. Very obvious stuff. The interesting thing happens when we look toward the downside. If we take a look downwards, guys, we can see we have a huge, huge chunk of support around 35 to 34. And of course, we have our bearish trigger sitting at 33,350, which is going to be over here. What we would expect if we break down was we would expect the market to go a little slower. We do not expect a rapid correction, okay? We do not expect massive amounts of volatility. In fact, this area of the VRPV will provide a decent chunk of support. So if we do see a breakdown of 35 400, which is that uptrending diagonal trend line, we would expect the market to start moving a little bit more sideways in this range until it comes down to retest this trigger point. If we lose a 33.35, that is when we expect volatility to pick up, as we can see a massive gap in the VRPV on the short term. Also, if we go to the higher time frame, you can see on the right hand side, that respective gap. You can see the gap right over here in the VIPV to 32K to 33.33. We can see that is a massive gap, which would likely be filled very quickly if the price breaks down from that short term trigger point. So while we remain above this uptrend trend line, we are bullish. We are bullish on the short term. We expect a continuation upwards to retest 38K. If we break down from this uptrending trend line, we are in a downtrend. That is going to be a four week long uptrend broken. We enter a downtrend. We expect a continuation downwards into support, which is 33.35. If we lose that 33.35 level, that is going to be when we fully flip the daily trend bearish, right? The daily trend will fully flip bearish when we break that level and we'll be expecting a continuation down to 32 or 30,600 retest in this high point. Let's go ahead and zoom out. While we remain above 32,000, we are technically macro bullish. So it doesn't matter what happens, guys. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin corrects all the way down over here. We remain macro bullish provided 32,000 holds according to the higher time frame charts. Now, what we can see over here is the four-year cycle. The four-year cycle overlaid Okay, with our key horizontal trigger points. Horizontal trigger points are simply technical words for price points when if broken up or down result in a significant shift, okay, in the trend type. Meaning, if we break from the bottom side up through 32k, we move from a weekly uptrend to a monthly uptrend. If we break from the bottom side to 48k and above, we move from a monthly uptrend into a bull run. So those trigger points determine shifts in the trend. Now, vice versa, if we break from above 32k and we close a monthly candle below 32k, that would signify a shift from a monthly uptrend into a downtrend. So again, these trigger points are very, very important to identify. So while we remain above 32,000 on the monthly chart, we are on an uptrend, we are on a macro uptrend, even if Bitcoin comes down to retest it, it would be considered a healthy correction. Now we'll go ahead and say it would be quite unusual, according to what we have seen in the past, right? According to what we have seen in the past, for Bitcoin to close a monthly candle below 32,000, again, it would be very unusual. It would be even more unusual for Bitcoin to come back to retest and break below 32,000 prior to a retest of 48. 
thousand. So these are things to consider, guys. When we look at the technicals, when we look at the structural levels, and then we look at you know how the prices played out before, historical price trends. Historical price trends are telling us Bitcoin is still going to continue up to 48k. The technical and structural levels are telling us, well, we're moving into resistance. We're starting to see exhaustion. We could see pullbacks. These pullbacks could take us to these levels. It is kind of like, you have to kind of pick and choose the battles over here. You have to take both into consideration, smash them together, and come to educated conclusions and trade the levels. So on the daily chart, we are starting to see exhaustion. We are starting to see weakness. Now it's very unlikely this exhaustion and weakness is going to metastasize into anything significant while we remain in a short-term uptrend. For any of this to actually develop into a downtrend, we need to first and foremost lose this short-term uptrending trend line. If we lose this short-term uptrending trend line, that is when the weakness which is developing on the daily will actually come to fruition and actually develop into a downtrend, okay? Until then, it is not there. All we have seen is a rejection from 38K with no lower lows um, and no signs. As of right now, the price will continue downwards besides some technical weakness. Now, with that being said, if we do lose this short-term uptrend, the technicals and the chart is all of a sudden going to start looking very bearish and we will likely see that continuation down toward those levels. So this is a time to pay attention. This is not the time to be aping in. Oh, you missed the entire rally up. Let's go ahead and put all my money into spot bags right now. No, that is not the time to do it. Okay, you've had time to do it. Now's the time to pay attention. Be cautious, be patient, watch to see what the price action does, see how it reacts and look for those opportunities. Okay, so... Technically, we are looking quite weak. Okay, unfortunately, we're looking quite weak. What we have seen, what have we seen? Let's take a look. The RSI has broken down from that major uptrending trend line. This uptrending trend line has been going since August, guys. It's back over here. So August. That is suggesting the entire cluster of price action here has been moving upwards in terms of momentum. We have now seen the first indication now, whether or, not the, whether or not that will last or be a blip or a, a fake down is another question. But we have still seen the first indication of weakness in this trend. This is the first indication of weakness in this entire trend. Number two, we have seen the marker cipher B print a red dot. This negative momentum shift suggests we're starting to see again buyers lose control of the trend and bears are stepping in. It represents exhaustion of the trend, okay? If you flip it, it would represent bullish absorption. Sometimes what I like to do personally is I like to look at the chart. I like to ask myself from a technical perspective, from a structural perspective, from everything I've looked at, where do I think the price is going? And then what I do is I flip the chart. I don't turn it to log. I flip the chart and I ask myself, does my assessment that I just made, based on everything I took into consideration, hold up the same? And I'll give you an example. If I expected the price to go up through 40 k and then I flip the chart, and I do not expect the price to go down, but instead I expect the price to go up, that would indicate to me that I have somewhere in my analysis a degree of bias, whether it be a conscious bias, based on what you want to see the price do, or whether it not be a subconscious bias based on your understanding of market structures, patterns, and how the TA is developing, right? So if you have an error in your understanding about how structures reflect buyers and sellers' habits, or what indicators are suggesting, you have an error somewhere that you're not aware about, that could subconsciously bleed into your overall assessment of what the price strength is actually doing, and that could go ahead and influence your decisions in a potentially negative way. And then you sit back and say, well, TA doesn't work. No, bro, you just don't know how to use it correctly. I hear a lot of people saying TA doesn't work, TA doesn't work, TA doesn't work. If you use a, a fork to bang a, ha a nail into a wall, maybe you get there eventually, but it's not going to be very easy. Pull out the hammer, it's done in one second. So sometimes it's less about the actual method and more about the tools you're using and applying. TA definitely does work. Okay, but if you're using the wrong tools or you're misunderstanding how to use those tools correctly, you're obviously going to get a pretty shot result. Okay, I think I'll leave it there, guys. I think we'll summarize everything. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Be aware, be honest with yourself, watch the price action, sit back and realize there's no need to feel emotions. If you're feeling emotions, that is a warning sign.
whether it be hype, whether it be FOMO, whether it be greed, whether it be the fear of missing out, whether it, I just said that, whether it be, you know, you're scared you're going to miss profits or you're scared of what the price action is doing, whatever emotion you are feeling, every single emotion, a positive or a negative emotion should be seen as a warning sign that your risk is either overexposed or getting close to being overexposed. Because if you're truly investing what you can afford to lose, you don't care what the price action does. I have a fair bit of money in spot. I have a fair bit of money in spot bags. I literally could not care if they drop 70, 90 to 90% in the next two days. It would quite literally not phase me because I've only invested in those positions what I have actually accepted that I am willing to lose. Now, it's very unlikely that happens. In the next two or three years, we get a traditional bull market. They're likely to go up. But besides my point is, if you're investing, you have to treat your investment as a purchase and you have to accept the possible losses when entering that position, okay? If you do not accept the possible losses, you're going to be sitting there editing your position, panicking, getting your head out, head about it. You're never going to get a good night's sleep. You're going to be checking your phone 50 times a day. You're going to make the experience of cryptocurrency and trading very miserable. I will go ahead and say one more thing before I end up the video. If you are a trader like myself and we tell ourselves do not trade with an investor's mindset, okay? If you start accumulating spot, do not invest with a trader's mindset. If you understand what that means, great work. If you don't, touch on it a bit in another video. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow. Cheers.